I think there's a lot of opportunity here to stabilize things, and certainly I think the first thing that uh, Mike Goldman is going to need to do is regain some credibility with suppliers, with landlords, uh, also with the company's employees. A lot of the company's employees were laid off in 2012. I think those that remain are, are going to need to see some stability, know that JCPenney really cares about these relationships, that they're going to be around for a while. Uh, I think a lot of investors really should keep in mind, though, there's really not a whole lot that he's going to be able to do to stem the cash flow burn this year. Mm. JCPenney is already committed to a lot of payments. Um, last year under the old regime, things like fixtures, inventory, a lot of working capital payments were pushed from Q4 into Q1. Thus, I think we're, we're going to burn about a billion dollars of cash here just in the first quarter. Uh, I'm not sure if investors are, are really uh, properly anticipating that. You know, back to Mr. Ullman, if, if they tossed him out in the beginning, why, why bring back the very same guy that you said wasn't working in the first place? Well, I, I wouldn't say he wasn't working in the first place. I, I think that, you know, the reason to bring Allman back is, is exactly, you know, to communicate stability. I mean, these are a lot of the, the other stakeholders involved here, other than just investors, are, are the landlords, the suppliers, the employees that I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to be much more comforted to see Mike Allman back there than they would if another outsider came in. And that's the idea. Do you think he stays long or he's just there to get through this tough period? Oh, it's, it's impossible to say at this point. Let me go over to uh, Greg, who's looking at the charts for us. Talk to me about the stock. Okay, Trish. Well, price action doesn't lie. And in the last 14 months, the stock really got hammered. It traded from 44 all the way down to 14, below 14, which is where we presently are. The interesting thing about it is, though, if we look at a long-term chart here, which I brought along, you've got support that goes all the way back to 2008. That support area is right where the stock is now, between that $13 and $14 area. Regardless of that major long-term support, I'm not a buyer of the stock in here. Mm. I want the stock to work for us a little bit. I want to see it gain some legs, come up a couple of points. Don't be a hero. But for those traders that really want to dip their toe in here, it's about money management. If you have $100 to spend, spend 20 or 30 if you really want to participate. But I wouldn't do it. I'd only do it on strength. All right. Uh, let's go over to Dan, who's looking at the options uh, market right now. What are you seeing, Dan? Well, the best way to trade this is by using a call credit spread. I don't want to be a buyer of the stock here either, but you sure can't sell it. So a call credit spread enables you to profit as long as the stock doesn't rise. And that's what a lot of traders are talking about for JCPenney right now. Specifically, so so is, what do you mean traders are talking about for that? that, that what, what's its future in, in your view? Well, I think that JCPenney is going to be stuck in a range here for a while. I think it's not likely to dip down very much lower, but I don't think that it's going to continue to rise. So the trade that I'm looking at is selling the May 16 calls and at the same time buying the May 18 calls for protection. So as long as the stock stays below 16 by May expiration, the trade's a winner. Uh, Alex, does this one have a really uphill battle when it comes to its share price? It's a, it's a very uphill battle, yes. I think the balance sheet um, is going to continue to weaken throughout the course of the year as the company burns cash. I think there's a big opportunity to return to positive comps in the back half of the year, and I, I would fully expect JCPenney to do that. However, we're working on such a low sales base that we're still at least a few years away from profitability. What do you think Mike Ullman needs to do? I mean, other than stabilize the business, as you pointed out before, I mean, what about those customers that really liked coupons that didn't get the coupons with Ron Johnson? Can you start sending out coupons and get those people back in the door? You, They've you, already you gone elsewhere. You have to, Trish. you got to send that coupon out. I mean, <laughs> the, the, whole, the whole pricing scheme under the new JCPenney uh, under Ron Johnson was basically to pr take pricing down from here to here and take away the coupon. So the idea is that out the door pricing was never going to change. Uh, what we've started to see a little bit now is that ticket prices creeping up and up and up, and we've started to see more discounts. I think we're gonna wanna see more of that going forward. Do you think that was a kind of a fundamental flaw, Alex, that he didn't get the consumer psyche, the idea that Americans love a bargain? I, I do think that the, the strategy should have been tested. I think that, you know, coming from the background he did at Apple, I, I think, you know, a very full price environment. I, I, what you're selling at JCPenney is not a, as premium a product. It's a lot of products you can get from other retailers. A lot of JCPenney's private label stuff um, isn't exactly, you know, the highest end stuff where you can get away with, with that full price. So, yes, I think that, you know, they do need to be a little bit more uh, competitive on the pricing and really more about the messaging around the pricing. Uh huh. And you need a reason to get the people in the door. Right? You do. And, you and coupons traffic. are a big part of that. Sales are a big part of that. All right. Thanks so much to the whole gang. Appreciate it.